Hello everybody, I am the Link Zilla, and welcome back to Doom 3. When we last left off, we finally activated the, the first of the teleporters to get us into the second half of Delta Lab Sector 2, and now, we're about to say hello to a new friend. Hell, coming down. Ah, you surprised me. Yeah. I'm glad to see you. Dr. Michaels? I hope they would have sent more than just one guy, though. I've been studying one of the specimens we brought back to see if there's something physiological that would be a weakness, a way to stop them. I found nothing so far. Haven't had enough time. I'm gonna stay here and keep looking. It's the only thing I can do. There are combat supplies in the storage cabinet in the next room. The code is six two four. Six two. I hope four. you can use it. Two and four equal six. So, if you guys are secure. If you're secure here, I don't have a problem leaving you. Medical Archives, Specimen 125, Lateral Cranial X-Ray. Oh, sorry, I, I broke your laptop. <laughs> I'm gonna stay here and keep working. I'll upload my findings into the database. So that explains why they have all these lacerated pieces of imps lying around. <sighs> scan station. Air supine scan data. No weapons here. Though basically, if you do have combat supplies here, I actually think that you'd be better off you keeping them for yourself in case you're discovered here. But then again, if you don't have any weapons... I will definitely be taking that! And I'm maxed out on grenades again. Man, I'm gonna really be missing these grenades once I get to Delta Lab Sector 4. More or less what happens after I reach there. Do I go this way? Is this really what's the only thing that's keeping you safe, Doc? A pile of junk? I'd take that box and I'd fully seal it up. Of course, this door is sealed up, so... What happens if you get hungry here? Have you got food? Look, I can't go with you. This is too important for me to leave. Okay. Just so you know that if you actually survive this, you're probably going to be added on the people that are going to get sued because of this. UAC is probably going to throw you under the bus to save themselves. Yep, can't go back. And odds are he's probably dead. <laughs> like, he's been alone for two seconds and he's probably already dead. <laughs> Whoa! Ba boom! I think I heard Archfile. Yep, he's here. Took him out. I can understand Campbell's fascination. This thing definitely has a lot of appeal. Holy shit. God dang it. Oh well. Technically I'm kind of glad that these guys have pretty much replaced the shotgun guys. Because... Those guys are annoying because they feel like they're complete bullet sponges. Or shell sponges. It's been a while since I've had to back up anybody else's da data. 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 
Got a Jif, Gif. Oh, great! There's another one. Hey, he unlocked the door. I think. I'm pretty sure that that door was like orange the last time I saw it. Like the lights, it was blocked off. Aha! I'd love to see that. Oh god, I've been looking forward to this. Welcome to the Delta Complex Stasis Chambers. This facility was constructed to house and study the extra-dimensional beings, which were recovered during some of the first teleporter tests originating from Delta Level 3. While little is known about their native environment, the specimens appear to be carbon-based life forms with extremely high heat tolerances. The epidermal tissue is extremely resilient to abrasion or incision, which has complicated internal studies. Observational studies have shown incredible strength and agility, as well as the ability for some specimens to manifest and control cohesive plasma masses. The method by which these plasma masses are created is yet unknown. It is believed that the specimens possess a rudimentary intelligence and social structure, as was demonstrated during the first tragic expeditions through the portal. While the cost in human life has been great in acquiring these specimens, we hope to one day complete genomic mapping and begin to answer the many questions we have about these entities. They knew. They knew all along. Sons of sons of bitches knew what was on the other side. They sent us in there. Empty. Welcome to the Delta Complex Stasis Chamber. Alive. This huh? facility was constructed to house and study alive. the extra-dimensional beings. Current research genome mapping stasis. Tests, July. Delta Level Three. While little is known about their native environment, the specimens appear to be carbon-based life forms with extremely high heat tolerances. The epidermal tissue is extremely resilient to abrasion or incision, which is complicated in terms of specimen research mapping. September. Holy. Oh. Have not encountered one of these yet, but might have had a glimpse of one. Big guys. Find alternate path access to second floor. Welcome to the Delta Complex Stasis Chambers. Might as well check my emails. Alright. Let's see. Research Archive, Specimen 197, Imp. This humanoid's long and muscular limbs make it extremely agile as a biped or quadruped. Its long, sharp claws allow for climbing steep surfaces. A configuration of ten eyes provides the creature with a wide field of vision and ability to see with clarity in low-light environments. Living dead. Partial. Specimen 42, The Seeker of Life. Able to function without recognizable brain activity, this creature has little regard for self-preservation. Though slow-moving, its behavior is aggressive and tenacious. Specimen 27, Imp Partial. Left forearm amputated for biological study, researchers are currently studying how this creature is able to manifest and throw an explosive plasma projectile from its hands. I want- I bet. Specimen 218, Revenant. 
This creature's endoskeleton is visible through a translucent, non-solid skin. Despite the absence of any visible muscles, this creature is able to strike at close-range targets with enormous strength. Two shoulder-mounted cannons, controlled by its nervous system, allow this creature to fire guided and rocket-propelled missiles. Yep. And Specimen 31, Hell Knight. Partial. The cranial mass of this biped specimen indicates that it is one of the largest creatures inhabiting the site. Overpowering its prey with sheer might, the Hell Knight is one of the most ferocious predators known to our researchers. Like the Imp, this creature is able to defend itself at long range with thrown plasma projectiles. I kind of wish that they had storage tanks for pinkies and mancubi. <laughs> yep. So, they knew all along. Or at least they found out. And Betruger threw open the doors. Hello? Hello? Somebody's locked in the service hatch. Hello? I'm trapped out here. Please help me. If anyone can hear me, please help. Hello? Specimen transport. This is one of the ones where I'll be going in the dark because I'm pretty sure the light from the specimen containment pod is basically what I will u need to use to navigate. It's been a while since I've run it. It's been a while since I've run into any of the sentry bots. I really hope I'm not past the point in the game where I'll be able to use them. Ow! Pretty sure you're not what killed my fr our friend that was in here. Okay, maybe you are. Although what killed him basically sounded like a, more like a pinky. Dang it, man! Why didn't you just stay quiet? Jacob Simmons. Oh, Stemmons. No audio logs on, on file. <laughs> Maintenance. Apply power out. Uh, what? Storage locker update. All right. Jacob, we have recently changed the code on storage locker near the stasis transfer control to 371. Be sure to annotate this on the security report for the local security detail. Thank you, Thomas Franks, Delta Security Clerk. Two days ago. Maintenance, and this is from number one. Power out. Original message sent on the 13th. The damn power has been fluctuating all week in the specimen transfer area. These conditions make it extremely frustrating to work. Can you please send someone down here to check on the situation? Thank you, Jacob Stemmons. Mr. Stemmons, we are aware of the power problems in your area. Presently, we are dealing with several power issues throughout the entire Delta complex. It would be great help if you would check some of the circuit breaker boxes in Maintenance 4 to, to determine if it is simply a breaker issue. Please file a report with the help desk, and we will be out to your department as soon as possible. Thank you. Fuck you, Maintenance Division. No audio logs on this file. Well, nice of him to have kept all this stuff warm.
Dang it, how the heck did I get turned around? I just basically had to use some cells, so I know that I'm basically wasting a lot of time by doing this, but what can I say? It's a game. Some it's literally designed to waste time. Because I am confident that I am not coming back this way. See? And now I've got myself a lantern. Now unfortunately, this one isn't going to... This one isn't going to stop and wait for me. I be dead. Crap, I fell into a trap. I'm pretty sure that I'm pretty much dead, but... Because that thing is long since gone by now. I guess I'll follow the tracks. Yes, more are coming through. the end of the line. I don't like the sound of that breathing. Aha, uh -huh, so what was it? Seven one three? Eh, uh, seven four three? Seven three four? Seven three one? Alright, I'll check. Three, seven, one. Whoa. I think that at this point, it's already basically assumed that you're going to have pretty much all the guns, so it's pretty much like at. They're not going to give you any more weapons. Except for ones that you could find just lying around. But what was that noise? Legitimately sounded like something roaring. Something big.
Uh oh. It's decontaminating. I guess this isn't the end of the line after all. It came out of the office? Fuck you! I'm back at where the cells were. I am not a happy meal right now. Robocola. Thirsty thirst. You know, I'm pretty sure that, like... <laughs> In times like this, he'd literally break open the canister just to have something to drink. And I bet that this is the video log of what we just saw in the labs there. <clears throat> yep, Specimen Stasis Museum. Welcome to the Delta Demon Complex Museum. Stasis Chambers. This facility was constructed to house and study the extra-dimensional beings, which were recovered during some of the first teleporter tests originating from Delta Level 3. While little is known about awesome. their native environment, Betty machines on both the floors. specimens appear to be carbon-based life forms with extremely high heat tolerances. The epidermal tissue is extremely resilient to abrasion or incision, which is complicated in terms of Observational studies have shown incredible strength and agility, as well as the ability for some specimens to manifest and control the plasma masses. The method by which these plasma masses are created is yet unknown. It is believed that the specimens possess a rudimentary intelligence and social structure, as was demonstrated during the first tragic expeditions through the portal. While the cost in human life has been this great is where in acquiring they kept the soul these specimens, cube. We hope to one day complete what genomic mapping and begin to answer the many questions we have about these entities. It was discovered in 2104, located in a geographic region where UAC researchers have unearthed evidence of a long-lost civilization. We know nothing of this civilization other than they existed, and that they were all wiped out in some type of cataclysmic event, according to what we've been able to decode from stone tablets found throughout the ruins. Oh, what things we have been able to Mars. piece together reveal a culturally advanced society whose technology can only be described as mystic, as evidenced by Yuan's strange characteristics. Efforts to further examine Yuan have been futile. Mass spectrometer and radiation scanning methods have failed to provide reliable identification of the molecular makeup of this artifact. The object cannot be weighed, 
and in all tests, we've been unable to determine its mass. All attempts to physically manipulate or open the artifact have been met with no success. We also have had no success in deciphering the symbols adorning the one. What we do know is that the thermographic readings are constant, unwavering temperature of 98.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Our research continues, and we hope that with continued investment and research, we can, one day soon, learn to exploit the technologies that make up U-1. This is what I was looking for. Soul Cube. What you see before you is a relic codenamed U-1, or simply Soul Cube. It was discovered in 2104, located in a geographic region where UAC researchers what have unearthed evidence of a long-lost civilization. 2104? So we've had it for like the last, what, 40 years? Cataclysmic event, according to what we've been able to decode from stone tablets found throughout. We know nothing of this civilization other than they existed, and that they were all wiped out in some type of cataclysmic event, according to what we've been able to decode from stone tablets found throughout the ruins. What the soul cube as a weapon. Reveal a culturally advanced mm. society oh. whose technology He's replying to it. As Martian buddy, as Ian McCormick, it is a weapon. Efforts to further examine you Let's see. Computer, mass spectrometer and radiation scanning methods have failed to provide reliable identification. I'm not going to press the button because that's when Betruger is going to basically start saying stuff. Uh, this is the audio log of research director Larry Bowman, October 19th, 2145. I've been examining the glyphs on the cube-shaped artifact, which some are calling the soul cube, the and combined with previous research data, it is my conclusion that the device is some sort of and weapon. You will never if the power fluctuations would stop long enough for me to get the linguistic CPU online, then I am sure my theory would be verified. You know, I'll take this opportunity to lock in another constantly. It's just Well, never mind. Real cute. Task. What I've deciphered so far is a bit, I must say, disturbing. It seems that when one has possession of the artifact, if one inflicts damage or possibly kills another being, it extracts power from that event somehow. Now, once a certain threshold has been reached, the artifact has the ability to kill anything you attack. It. How you attack? It. How the heck did that kill me? Indicating. This is the audio log of research director Larry Bowman, October 19th, 2145. I've been examining the glyphs on the cube shaped artifact, what which some are calling the soul cube. Combined with previous one, research data, it is my conclusion that the device is some sort of weapon. Uh, the power function will stop long enough for me to get the linguistic CP online, then I am sure my theory is verified. We know nothing of this you know, I'll take this opportunity to lodge in another complaint about the continual power problems. Kind of this is a godforsaken reason bad enough without having to watch the lights flicker constantly just... throughout the rooms. Well, we never mind. To to Back to the task again. What I've deciphered so far is that I must say the spirit is right. It seems that one who has possession of the artifact of one of these things possibly kills another being. It strikes power from that event somehow. Now, once a certain threshold has been reached, the artifact has the ability to kill anything. With a molecular value of this artifact, I'm not certain. Indicating that the artifact is autonomous and set. To date, I've only deciphered about two-thirds, give or take, of the markings, but my initial glance at the rest of them indicates it harbors some far greater power. As you know, at this time we have not seen any reaction from the cube, and it has withstood any scanning, abrasion, or other test beyond picking it up and examining it. I suspect that just like the civilization that constructed it, its capabilities are diminished to the point of being useful only as a paperweight. <laughs> End of log. 
think that's ironic considering something uh, in Doom 2016, which we will get to. Real cute game, but I'm just thinking 372. March 7th, 1992, maybe? When was the original Doom shareware released? Ah, December 10th, 1993. Oh well. Would have been cute. What you see before you is now, let's see how Betruger reacted to all that. Malcolm Betruger reply the Soul Cube as a weapon. Dr. Bullman, I received your report, and I find it rather perplexing. Given how little we know about this object, I cannot imagine how you've come to such bizarre conclusion, let alone any conclusion at all. Send me all your notes for immediate review. In the meantime, for your own sake, do not share these findings with anyone else. I would hate people to think that one of my highly regarded scientists is prone to flights of fantasy. MartianBuddy.com You may be a winner! Dr. Bullman, I hope you'll find this email. I have... Oh... <laughs> oh, that's clever. You see what I mean, guys? Oh, I was right. Dr. Bullman, I hope you will find this email. I have hidden my true name and address by disguising this email. He may be reading your messages. Your boss, I will not mention his name, is far more dangerous than you can imagine. I believe he is using you and corrupting your work. I believe your findings are correct and he knows it. He wants to hide the findings from the UAC and use the object for himself. I don't know why yet, but I will find out. Do what you can to stall him. Do not let him take possession of the object. Wonder who that was actually from. HR coordinator. Volunteer today! You see that? Suddenly, he's getting something from HR a week later, telling him to volunteer for the experiments in Delta Labs. The UAC Mars facility is looking for volunteers. We would like to encourage people from your team to help in the following areas. Safety Committee. Work with teams to update and inform UAC staff on the importance of safety on Mars. Check placement of health packs around the facilities. Plan events for Safety Awareness Month. Commitment, commitment here will earn volunteers five extra credits per month. Research assistance. Delta Labs is looking for individuals to help with our exciting breakthrough work. Projects vary. See research coordinator for more information. Health test and liability waiver will be required. Commitment, commitment here will earn volunteers 25 extra credits per month. For more information about any of these opportunities, post on your opening in your department. Please see Sierra Olson, volunteer coordinator in the UAC HR. Ian McCormick. It is a weapon. Did we meet with Ian earlier? McCormick? McCormick? None that I can see. Dr. Bullman, I received your report and I... Oh. It is a weapon. Larry, you are correct. The Soul Cube is a weapon. I've translated the glyphs and now I understand how it works. The Soul Cube must be charged before it can be used. The souls within it must sense at least five deaths before the spiritual potentiality ma matrix reaches pa po positronic astriction. <laughs> Based on your interpretation of the glyphs, the cube has a way of acknowledging the, its readiness for action, but it's unclear how this happens. More importantly, we still don't know what will happen when it's released. This has gone way beyond the purview of Mars Station or even the UAC. We can't trust Betruger. He's gone mad. I'm preparing a report to send to the highest authorities on Earth. Good luck and God help us, Ian. But then, who's the one that basically, like, translated the glyphs on the Soul Cube to begin with? Martian Bunny Power Out. What you see before you is a relic codenamed U1, or simply Soul Cube. 
Cullen Holly's in a geographic Arfet. region where UAC researchers have unearthed evidence of a long lost civilization. Right, let's go. I have the soul cube in hell, and you will never find it. All right, Dr. Buttruger. It's on now. <clears throat> Whatever you're doing, I'm gonna put an end to it before the fleet gets here. I'm gonna find you. I don't know what- I don't exactly know what you mean by hell, but I'm gonna find you and I'm gonna make you give that soul cube back. And if it is a weapon that can be used to stop these things, we'll be taking it. Enter access code. Level three, I'm almost there. <clears throat> Elizabeth McNeil, oh my god, we found a woman's office. Hopefully not. Oh well, Elizabeth McNeil, totally not Samantha Grimm. Thank you. Tell me what you can, Liz. Hey, Liz, she was in contact with Teresa that we were, that we, like, Teresa Ch he's her. Huh. Elliot Swan, investigative report. <clears throat> Mrs. McNeil, I have received your formal request for an inquiry into the activities on Mars. As requested by the board, I will be departing soon to investigate your claims. It's going to take us a month and a half to get there. Unfortunately. I have my bodyguard with me, and unfortunately we've been saddled with another marine recruit. He's not exactly the best conversationalist. Quite boring, I should think. Your charges against Dr. Malcolm Betruger are being taken very seriously. As you may already know, the UAC, as a matter of policy, will not acknowledge or comment on questions or statements advanced by the press based on rumor or hearsay. I have been asked to explain that you are not to discuss this situation with anyone outside our legal department. Thank you, Elliot Son, UAC Executive Counsel. Yeah, that's the thing, it's that, like, even though Swan is trying to stop Petruger from what he's doing, he's still a member of the UAC, so... Can't exactly trust him. Hey, it's from Michael Abrams! All Delta Level 2 personnel, in an effort to minimize supply requirement errors, I'm having all access codes to secure storage areas changed. We must continue to keep flight, fight records for all inventory kept in storage. Please update your records with a new code for storage area 7 to 7, 2, 5. 2 plus 7 equals, wait, 2 plus 5 equals 7. Thank you, Michael Abrams, Delta Security Chief. Dang it. <laughs> How is it that we haven't run into Sarge yet? Thought that we would be meeting him soon. Oh yeah. Hey, it's the Martian buddy stuff. Man, when they said that I would be keeping it upstairs, they really meant it. This is good. This is very, very good. And what else you got for me? Let's see. Holy shit! We weren't supposed to have this thing, right? I mean, it's a secret. It is a secret, but... I guess they really didn't think a lot of people would figure it out. <laughs> T 
10 shots. 14 total. You see what I mean? Martian Buddy is arming these people. <clears throat> right. Let's see what Abrams has to say about this. All Delta Level 2 personnel, Level 3 access codes have been changed due to 6 month rot rotation. The new code is 463. 463. Thank you, Mike Abrams, Delta Security Chief. We're finally going to Sector 3. Oh, this is promising. Delta Labs 3. Here we come. Delta Labs 3, variable was prior experimentation. All access under security test chambers must be... Oh, great. The Truger! He's got his own little escort there. And where are Swan and Campbell? Ah, oh, not you guys again. Why wasn't my gun coming up? <clears throat> Wait, at what point did I save? Okay. I won't be I will be circumventing this. Haha. <laughs> See why I love these things? Destroy the bridge. What the? Teleport access. Access granted. This will get me back up to ninety, I suppose. All right. Gotta do this. Looks like this is the bridge. I kind of wish that I'd followed them, so I could have seen, witnessed that. Oh well, auto save. I can always come back here later. Bathroom. Your Honor, would the court be willing to grant me a short bathroom break? Oh God. Where are you?
mirror is broken. Well, somebody's got seven years of bad luck. And it ain't gonna be me. You know, I get that this is the future and everything, but, uh, why exactly do the toilets look like they have thruster engines? <laughs> Maybe that's a reference to the Seinfeld joke. It's got a flush like a jet engine. <laughs> George is talking about the best toilet in New York City. I really miss Seinfeld. A couple of years ago, there was a video store near me that basically was going out of business. And... Basically, it was closing down over the summer, so I decided to go in there, see what they were sell trying to get rid of very quickly. For unfor fortunately, they had, like, uh, several seasons of Seinfeld all packaged up on the those DVD release box sets. Unfortunately, I still thought that, even at discount prices, they were still too expensive for me to get. Especially during summertime, when I was pretty low on money. I regret it, because I really should have gotten them. Especially because, like, well, in, I didn't think that it would be all that big a deal, because in the past, my brother-in-law was able to get me access to, like, every single season of Seinfeld. Problem is, he doesn't like Seinfeld all that much, so when I basically moved out of his place and into my own apartment, he kind of uh, erased all the, dat the data for it. Thank you for opening the door. It's worth it, trust me. This is a teleporter. Or at least a pad for it. I really hope that there's actually nothing in there and it's not just there to basically distract me. Hey, there was a PDA there, and I completely missed it. Let's see, Frank Serrano. There's a lot of Franks up here. Personal audio log. 
Delta Control immediate medical attention. Dr. Serrano, recently Delta Science team members have reported serious cases of internal irrational behavior and insomnia. They believe these issues are directly linked to the recent teleportation experiments. Please report to Delta Level 3 ASAP and assist with medical needs. Thank you. Dr. Serrano, we currently cannot process your request for additional medical personnel in Delta Level 3. You are aware the medical staff has experienced serious HR shortages within the past two weeks and cannot take on the additional workload. There are surplus medical kits located in storage room D31 across from the lower terminal offices. The code to storage cabinet 317 is 841. Delta Control, 841 for 317. I'm getting kind of worried that we might be running out of, like, storage lockers to find. This is the personal audio log of Dr. Frank Serrano, dated September 19th, 2145. I've been brainstorming on Petruger's thoughts about achieving sustained uninterrupted transfers from teleportation. systems can only build enough of a truck to have their portals open for approximately 10 to 15 seconds. It's enough time to get a team through but not enough time to send in some of the heavier equipment. Engineering in the Inpro facility informed me that we can theoretically boost the active portal time to 45 seconds quite easily. But this will require rerouting power from central processing, and we just have to put the downtime. The power requirements for the system are astronomical. We're sucking power from three veins in Inpro just to power chamber one. I have no idea how we can sustain transfers for longer than 60 seconds without giving serious thought to reorganizing the teleport power grid. I'll sleep on this. This is Dr. Frank Serrano signing off. I thought doctor meant he was a medical doctor. Why is he, ta is, why is he talking electrical engineering for the teleporter? Han Lee. Ooh. Alrighty. <clears throat> Delta Security, Security Team Info. Han, due to the incident last week, Delta Security Team will be storing additional supplies in cabinets 386 and 387 near the first teleport chamber. We will update the access codes to 386 as soon as equipment arrives. Thank you, Thomas Polina, Delta Security Clerk. We will update the access codes to 386. Alright, so... Oh. 386 to 836. That's confusing. 836. 836. Okay, so... This is the audio log of Administrative Assistant Han Lee, dated October 6th. Decontamination chamber sequence initiated. Have subjects enter the chamber for chemical the decontamination. Jobs. Armor Corps, first platoon, and first science team were completely wiped out this morning on their second excursion. And prior to being charged with writing up the reports and sending this information back to the You can't teleport into the decom chamber. You're dirty. First cup of coffee for the day. Five hours of sleep the night before. No shower. And I have to look for dead bodies to fill out paperwork on. I haven't seen the actual corpses, but word coming down from the grapevine says that it looks like they have been hacked up pretty good. This says everyone on the base spooky. Retruger is nowhere to be found, and there are a lot of questions being asked with no answers from anyone. Last I heard, they were suiting up the next outfit with the new BFGs. BFGs? Sounds like they weren't taking any chances on this next trip with them packing that kind of firepower. Right. So they sent in a team, this time with big guns. All right. Decontamination process started. Decontamination. What happened complete. to them? Have a nice day. This is the audio log of Administrative Assistant Han Lee, dated October 20th, 2024. Delta scientists 
sent another group of researchers through the portal two days ago, and they failed to return at the scheduled time. The radio transmissions to the research body have gone unanswered. They didn't Even come our back. tracking systems can find them. There's a portal. Losing lives is one thing, but losing our proprietary technologies is another. The team was equipped with the newest BFG weaponry. We fear those guns may have fallen into the hands of those that killed them. We don't know who or what is behind that portal. But until we find out where our guns are, I'm suggesting we suspend operations of the portal. Thank you. End of log. So... The BFGs have been left behind in on the other side. Well, that's good news for me, but that means that the creatures probably have them now. I'm remembering this puzzle. It was a bit of a tricky one to figure out, and I've only got like five minutes left on this video. But I have a feeling that we'll be heading into Sector 4 really quickly. Transfer MS Control permission to Station Control. Please select Teleport Destination. No teleport. check what's back here first. I feel like that image of that imp teleporting in with the flames behind him, that's like signature Doom 3 right there. Yep. Remember a few episodes ago where I told you we were going to start seeing some serious shit in the base? Something that you're going to need a flamethrower to get rid of? Yep. And somehow, it has the durability of metal. Choose destination. Pad. Pad one selected. Oh. <laughs> ah! Okay. So that's basically just teleported me a few feet. And. It allowed me to discover ammo belt. Good. Now let's Pad get up to the balcony. Selected. Whoa! I think I lost my lunch. Well, it was Frank's lunch, technically. <laughs> Oops. Dang it.
Take the contamination process started. <clears throat> Decontamination complete. Have a nice day. My patience with you is wearing thin. Imagine how I feel. Oops. I th honestly thought that there was still glass there. I did I save? Let's find out. Good. Decontamination process started. Decontamination complete. Have a nice day. My patience with you is wearing thin. his head off. Oxygen tank in here. You know, I wonder. Hmm. I guess they were, I guess Mythbusters was right. Those tanks really wouldn't blow up that way. Find something. Speak of the devil. I'm literally about to say I'll find something to shoot at eventually. I'll come back for you. Look around you, Marine. Everyone is dead, and soon you will join them. There goes the timer. Not cool, Betruger. Locking me in here, preventing me from going back to the cells. Security Terminal 2. Oh. <laughs> the timer went off. Oh well. Looks like that is all the time that I have for this video. I really hope that you guys are enjoying it. I seem to be having a lot of fun. It's it's just as intense as I remember, and I'm just getting too into the experience. Not really making any kind of funny poli funny witty, witty commentary, but... We are almost there. We 
We'll be getting to Delta Labs Sector 4 in the next episode, and we will be concluding Act 2 and going headfirst into Act 3, at which point the game will be coming to an end very soon. So, in the meantime... Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please leave a comment on the comment section below. Show like and share with your friends. You want to keep up to date with more Do Doom 3 coming at you in the future. Then be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell for notifications. And as always, I will catch you guys in the next video. Later.